Today I will talk about .NET MAUI and Blazor. Why you should use it, when you should use it and how you can get started. Welcome back to another .NET MAUI episode. Today we will talk about the .NET MAUI and Blazor. You may have heard about Blazor, maybe for web development like WebAssembly or Blazor Server. But now you can also use the Blazor technology for building native mobile and desktop applications. You will use something that is called Blazor WebView inside of MAUI. And it will not render a native UI, but it will not render a native UI, it will render a web UI. But everything will run inside of the app. So with the C sharp code, you will have native access to the native APIs. You can see Blazor MAUI as a third hosting options beside of Blazor server and WebAssembly. Because it's not Blazor WebAssembly running in MAUI, it's not Blazor server, you don't call a server when you load the Blazor web view. Everything is inside of the app. And for me, I think that is one thing that makes Blazor and MAUI interesting. Because you can use the knowledge you already have if you are a web development and start building apps and still have access to the native stuff. And you can also combine that together with the native UI because the Blazor web view is only a component or a control inside of MAUI. So we can use it as a whole application if you want to, you can use it for one single page or you can use this as just a small part of the page. So why should you use this? Yeah, the obvious thing is that you want to share code between your web applications and your mobile apps. Because there are many apps that you want to have both on web and you want to have them in the app store. And for those cases, when you don't maybe need a native UI, Maui Blazor is a really good option for you. And the component model in Blazor makes this so great. And one other good thing is that you can use maybe just a single component that you have in your web application. Maybe some great component for visualization of data. Or it's open up new worlds of components and controls to the not MAUI because all third party controls or components as they call in Blazor, you can use them now inside of .NET MAUI. You're not limited to the ecosystem of .NET MAUI and the controls available there. You can use all the Blazor components. So another reason for this is maybe that you have web developers mainly in your company and now they can start building mobile applications more easy than they could when they maybe have to learn SAML, they have to learn MVVM. It's easy to get started and you can share the code. So it has been time to go to Visual Studio and I will show you how to get started. In later videos I will show you more tips how you can reuse code between web and apps and how you should set up your Visual Studio solution and have a good architecture. So subscribe to my channel so you don't will miss that. So let's go. So here we have the new project dialog with all the templates available in Visual Studio. This is Visual Studio for Mac as you can see, but you will have a similar experience if you use Windows. So here we have my recent used templates, but here we'll have the web and console templates. We have app, library, tests, multi-platform. And we will go to multi-platform because the base here is the app. So we can here go and see that we have .NET MAUI app, we have .NET MAUI Blazor app, and we have .NET MAUI class library. And of course, we also have the Xamarin stuff here, but today we will go with .NET MAUI Blazor app. So continue, target framework .NET 6, give the project a name, Blazor demo. 
And then we just have to wait a bit. So here we should do is with a new project created by the template. So we can see this is similar, the project structure to a regular Maui app, but we have this folder, WWE root, we have import.racer, we have a main racer, we have the pages here, we have racers pages inside of them. So we can start to go to the Maui program class and see what we have here. And the difference here compared to a regular Maui app is that we have this add Maui Blazor web view. And we also in debug add this Blazor web view developer tools. Otherwise it's similar as a regular Maui app. So we can go to the main page .saml, and here we can see the blazer web view. And here we have the root component and the selector hashtag app. I will show you why that selector is used soon. And then we have a component type, a component that should be loaded when this web view is loaded. And that is the main component. So let's go to the WW root folder and go to the index.html file. And here we have like the scale of the blazer part with the head tags, HTML body. Uh, and here we have the app selector. It's inside of here we will load the content from the components. If you're familiar with blazer web development, this is not new for you. And here we also have the CSS files in the WW root folder. And here is also where we will add images if we want to use them inside of the blazer. So we can go to the main component and here we can see that we have a router and that makes it possible to navigate inside of the blazer web view. If we don't want to navigate, we don't need a router, we can use the component directly. That can be useful if you, for example, just want a part of the page to be the Blazor web view, then we don't need a router. But in this app created by the template, the whole app is the Blazor app. So we can start to run it to see how it looks. So here the app is running on Mac and when you run a Blazor Maui app on Mac, it's Mac Catalyst that is used. And if you don't know what Mac Catalyst is, that is Apple's way to bringing iOS apps to Mac. So it's using the iOS APIs and then it's mapped to some Mac stuff and that part is made by Apple. So we don't have to care about that, but it's good to know that it is Mac Catalyst running. So here the app is, we have the same application as in the regular web blazer template. It's just running inside of the app instead. To show you that this is running natively, I will now go and use some native APIs. Okay, so here we can use, let's say, the location API from Maui Essentials. Geolocation.default.get location async. What I also did here to make this work on iOS, I added this, uh, uh, I added this entry to the info playlist, so, and that is something you need to do on iOS, but you can read more about that in the documentation or in coming videos where I will talk more about the Mao essential stuff. We need a property that we can add values for and that we can bind the UI to. So we can say a string, call it latitude, get. And a longitude. 
and then we can add it here. Let's change to new position, latitude, longitude, and then we assign the values. Latitude is location dot. Ah, we need an await. Latitude to string. Longitude is location dot longitude for to string. Okay. Oh, and we also need a setter here, of course. Yeah, and now we are ready to run this. And here we have the permission, so when app is used, we can use location. And here we have latitude 60.41862 and longitude 15, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so now we have used native APIs inside of a Blazor web view that has rendered a web UI. But we still have native access to all the iOS Android, Mac Catalyst, and Windows APIs, depending on what type of app we are building. In coming videos, I will show you more about Blazor and Blazor WebView, how to set it up to share so much code as possible, and some good architecture tips. So like this video, subscribe to the channel, because there will be a lot of more content. See you next time.